To be effective in reducing traffic noise levels, the barrier must be sufficiently high and long enough to provide the required reduction in noise levels. Differences in elevation between the highway, noise sensitive site, and noise barrier can greatly influence the amount of noise reduction. For example, at an overpass, the highway can exceed the elevation of the top of a noise barrier, limiting the noise reduction capabilities of the barrier. Along arterial roads, noise barriers can be ineffective because of gaps in the barrier, needed to accommodate driveways and cross streets. The effectiveness of a noise barrier is evaluated using the same federally approved Traffic Noise Computer Model, TNM. This model is used to determine the feasibility and cost reasonableness of providing a noise barrier. Feasibility addresses the construction and maintenance of the noise barrier at a particular location and the ability of the noise barrier to provide a minimum noise reduction of 5 decibels at one or more sites. In addition, it must meet the design goal of at least a 7 decibel reduction at at least one site. Cost reasonableness addresses the equitable expenditure of state and federal funds. Noise barriers are only constructed if they meet the design goal for noise reduction, the cost reasonableness criteria, and have support from adjacent property owners and residents. Noise sensitive sites that would experience at least a 5 decibel reduction from the noise barrier are referred to as benefited receivers. The benefited receivers are limited to locations close to the noise barrier. Although noise abatement is evaluated at all impacted receivers, it is not always possible to construct a feasible noise barrier that effectively reduces traffic noise at all sites determined to be impacted. As part of a noise study, an optimum noise barrier height is determined based on the benefit provided to impacted residences. The optimum height of the barrier will vary from one group of impacted residences to another based on the residence's positions in relation to the roadway and the noise barrier. The TNM computer model is used to identify this optimum barrier height. Even though noise barriers can lower noise levels adjacent to a highway, there are potential negative aspects associated with noise barriers such as obstruction of view, reduction in areas exposed to sunlight, and obstruction of breezes. The construction of a noise barrier may also adversely affect nearby vegetation. For a proposed residence to be considered in a noise study, a building permit must be acquired prior to the date that the Federal Highway Administration approves the location and conceptual design of the highway project. Location and design concept acceptance is granted to the department when all documents submitted to the federal agencies, including the noise study report for the proposed highway project, satisfy all federal rules and policies. The date that location and design concept acceptance is granted becomes the date of public knowledge for a proposed highway project. The district cannot evaluate noise barriers for noise-sensitive land uses that are permitted for construction after a project's date of public knowledge. However, there are several proactive approaches that can be used to ensure that new development will be compatible with existing adjacent transportation corridors. These methods include compatible land use planning by local governments, requiring adequate buffers or setbacks between new noise sensitive land uses and a highway, or constructing a berm or barrier as part of the initial construction of noise sensitive land use areas. These are a few examples of methods that can be initiated in the early stages of development planning for areas adjacent to existing highways. Let's review some of the key points of the District 1 noise evaluation process. There must be a proposed project in order to perform a noise study and to consider noise abatement. Noise sensitive sites such as residences are considered impacted if the predicted noise level reaches or exceeds 66 decibels. Noise barriers are only evaluated for impacted noise sensitive sites, must provide at least a 5 decibel noise reduction for at least one site, 
must meet the noise reduction design goal of 7 decibels for one additional site and also must be cost reasonable. And noise barriers can only reduce traffic noise at sites close to the highway and cannot eliminate traffic noise. The Florida Department of Transportation has developed and implemented a traffic noise evaluation program in response to the issue of traffic noise and federal requirements. We hope this presentation has helped you better understand this program and our commitment to providing feasible, reasonable, and equitable noise abatement measures.